Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King. I'm excited about telling people about Jesus. Today I have a very special guest with me, Chance Walters. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Daniel. It's my so, joy. We are together at a conference in Indonesia where we're talking about reaching everyone on earth with the gospel of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And you have been an evangelist for many years. You're passionate about reaching people for Jesus. Tell me a little bit about where that passion came from. How, how did you get started telling people about Jesus? Well, Daniel, that's a great question. I was in jail. I was 23. My fourth DUI. I didn't have anywhere to go. And I stepped into Sand Hills Teen Challenge on April the 29th. I went to sleep and I woke up, I walked into a chapel service, and I got saved. I, I was raised in church. I tell people the best drug my parents, um, the best drug I've ever done is my parents drug me to church. And so I was <laughs> kind of born in, in church. Yeah, I was born and raised in church, but I wasn't looking for God, but God was looking for me. And at 23 years old, I encountered the love of Jesus in the largest, most successful faith-based recovery home in the world. I did, I'd never heard of Teen Challenge, but um, t there's Teen Challenge centers all over the world, but they were there when I needed them the most. And I got saved. And I tell people I made a commitment. I made a commitment to graduate that program, and a year later I felt called into ministry. Um, I love to say, you know, somebody helped me, and now I want to help you. I want to help the next person. Um, but I got saved and my spiritual father was an evangelist and I served him. I was in the program for a year, but then I stayed on staff and I served him for three years. Um, I signed up for a six month internship and it turned into three years and traveling church to church, um, school to school, doing school assembly, sharing my testimony. It, um, it got in my DNA and I just love to see people get saved. It's, there's no greater thing to live for, I don't think. It's, uh, Amen. It's mm, always exciting mm, mm, to see mm, someone give their life mm, to Jesus. Mm. So mm. tell me a little bit of some of the different types of ministry that you've been involved in. What, what type of evangelism? I mean, there's many different types. There's some people go out on the street and preach. Some people are going door to door. Some people are preaching big crusades. What types of evangelism have you done over the years? Well, I, I, I love my journey because uh, people ask me, Chance, who are you? You know, what do you do? And they want to put a label on you. And me, I'm like a denominational mutt. You know, I was born Baptist, if you will. I went to Teen Challenges, an Assembly of God affiliated program. Then I, I went to Lee University to Bible school, which is Church of God. So I've just kind of bounced around, but I just love the global church and I've been able to serve in different capacities um, before we started our nonprofit um, before we launched our evangelistic ministry I served on staff at a local church as youth pastor and associate pastor and so looking back I'm so glad that I had these stepping stones if you will um, as I have like a, a greater perspective uh, of the church and, and, and um, a, a deeper respect for people and their positions. And so I've been a part of all different types, as you say, of evangelism. For me, it all started in a nursing home. When I was in Bible school, I would go um, to a nursing home and preach on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. And I'd just, I'd just be laying hands on everybody, you know? Just, but it was, I, I was, it was my Jerusalem. It just kind of started at home and and I share in my faith with my family. I've watched my whole family tree get saved. I watched so many of my my old friends that I used to get high with, they got saved. And so it's just been this journey of just growing in my faith. And um, and so I don't think it's it, it's it's everything. I don't think there's one answer. I think it's just starting where you are and I love the tagline of the conference that we're at right now reaching everyone requires everyone and, and uh, amen mm -hmm. you're good friends with Tamron Anayat who is a, also a friend of mine working in the nation of Pakistan I've been there several times to Pakistan with Tamron you've been there several times with Tamron and uh, the United family have been dear friends for for many years love them 
In fact, I've interviewed Tamron on the Evangelism Podcast. So if you're interested, go back and find his episode. And if you want to hear about what God's doing in, in Pakistan. But like, tell me some of what you've seen God do when you've gone to Pakistan. Well, God is pouring out His Spirit in Asia. We're in Asia right now. I think we heard last night 65% of the world's population is right here in Asia. And God's doing something. Um, I minister um, all over America. I've been to 49 states. I'm missing North Dakota. you got to go there. <laughs> There's got to be someone in North Dakota that needs Jesus. Amen. <laughs> and I've been to 36, 37 nations. But probably wow. my favorite place to go is Pakistan um, because people are, are hungry for the gospel. Um, mass crowds coming to experience miracles. Um, I always say Muslims are my special guest. I mean, they they come to pray and they come for healing, and God meets them right where they are. But Tamron opened the door for us um, to go to Pakistan. Um, we've hosted crusades in a lot of different places, um, but when Tamron and I met, sparks began to fly. He had been praying for eight years. God send me back to Pakistan, and we met. He lives about 20 minutes from me, and. It's just been a great um, e experience to see what God is, is doing in that nation. But we're in Indonesia right now, the largest Muslim nation in the world, but Pakistan is the second largest Muslim nation in the world. Yeah. And, and we have to believe, Daniel, that God's raising up evangelists and missionaries in Pakistan to send them into the Middle East. I just, I believe Amen. that. Amen. Um, yeah. Um, this something is about to spark in the Middle East, and we're going to see this billion soul harvest that everybody's talking about. It's got to happen there. So that's mm -hmm. where most of the people live. And so now, uh, you just recently uh, did a crusade with my friend Alejandro Arias, who uh, I met in Costa Rica at a T.L. Osborne crusade. Uh, he was probably about 12 years old at the time, known as a boy preacher of Costa Rica, but uh, now he's a great evangelist. And uh, Alejandro set up crusades in about 20 different countries this year at, at Pentecost, and you did one crusade in Dominican Republic, the, the city of San Francisco. What did you see God do in Dominican? Well, I believe that the key to the, the great final harvest is, is unity. It's the missing link. No. Um, if we would all come together for the sake of the gospel, there's nothing that we could not accomplish as the church. And and I love the initiative that they launched this year, um, is P the P24 initiative. Uh, their goal was 10 countries, 10 crusades, with 10 collaborating with 10 different ministries, reaching 100,000 souls. And, and I think they came close to their goal. Okay, maybe I misspoke uh, about 20, uh, but 10 is great. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. no, it's yeah. good. I like oh, what double. a blessing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Evangelists, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but I was just talking to Werner Nightingale with the, the Go Movement, and mm -hmm. I think this year they want to expand. From the time of Easter right. into Pentecost, this year they want to expand and do more countries. So I think that's what, what I was thinking of. You're right. Um, but uh, you've also done stuff down in Brazil, lots of different places. Like, like, give me some testimonies, some pop testimonies from different parts of the world. I know I'll, I'll give you a testimony um, from our most recent gospel crusade in Pakistan. Um, it, when my definition of revival is when God comes down. Yeah. And, and when God comes down, there's, there's nothing that's, you know, impossible. And we've just seen so many miracles, um, David, uh, Daniel. We um, it, it, people ask me all the time, why doesn't God do miracles in America? And God does do miracles in America for those yeah. who believe. And it, it's the same God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And uh, miracles. As a matter of fact, if you've never seen a miracle, I tell people to go look in the mirror because you are. You are a miracle, and the greatest miracle is, is salvation, and it seems that we're living in the greatest, you know, harvest in the history of the world. Um, many times we get, we get stuck and, 
you know, we can't see the forest because of the trees. We're just so busy in our own little routines. But when you look at what God is doing on a global scale, and I think that's what we do as evangelists, is, is we get to see what God's doing across the board. And we've just seen so many miracles. Um, I mean, the blind eyes open, the deaf, you know, they hear. Um, I think we've seen more demons manifest here recently. That's what I wanted to say in the most recent Pakistan crusade. It just seems that when God comes down, I think the devil knows his time is short. And, um, and he's doing all that he can to deceive us, but we know the truth. Um, Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if someone's listening and they want to find out more about your ministry or maybe even support you and help send you to the nations, what is your website that they can find out more information about you? Just real simple, chancewalters.com. And we, we have a podcast that's called On the Revival Road. It's kind of our tagline. Um, where in the world are the Walters is? And so we're on the Revival Road, and that's our podcast. You can check it out. And uh, we have an, an email blast. If you go to our website, you can put in your email, and we send out an uh, email every Wednesday with just an update of where we're at and what God's doing. Very cool. And you also have a training program for evangelists. Tell me about that. We, we do. It's called the EMT School. Um, God spoke to me back in 2020 when all the churches closed. We, we were seeing so many people get saved. I mean, for the evangelists, it was the heyday. I mean, the world was just perturbed, and we were preaching, and, um, and so many people were getting saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And I prayed, God, what do we do with all these people? Because my schedule, um, everything was canceled, all my trips, so I was at home. And, and we were ministering locally, and we saw so many people give their life to Jesus that I was praying, God, how can we disciple these people? And he spoke to me, and he said, I want you to start the Evangelist Missionary Training School. And so that's what we did. It's just, it's nothing new. I like the, I like the name, EMT, Evangelist <laughs> Missionary Training. What a great blessing. Yeah, when somebody's in trouble, who do they call? You know, EMT. EMT, they show up on the scene. <laughs> And so it's been fun. It's a, it's a three-month school to help you become more confident in sharing your faith. Um, just real simple. Awesome. But all that's on our website. And, awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for being on the Evangelism Podcast. Love hearing your story and just love your heart for Jesus. It's awesome. Thanks, Daniel. You too. I love to, I love to see what God's doing through your ministry. And you don't know this, but I've listened to a lot of your podcasts. Episodes. Oh, really? Wow, yes. that's great. So if you're listening today, <laughs> share this. Be an evangelist and share this, this podcast. Mm. God bless you. Amen. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.